So I thought I would look at um, fractal dimensions. All right. Again, Wikipedia. You have your feelings about Wikipedia, whatever the fuck, but it's there. Anyway, um, so fractal dimensions are non-integer um, dimensions. Um, which is very nice, because what I was saying in my, um, my video about transcendental functions and dimensional analysis, the first one, um, most of it was about logarithms. And for the most part, you're going to get fractional dimensions with logarithms. So let's look at this. All right. The concept of a fractal dimension rests in unconventional views of scaling and dimension or just paying attention, is figure four, which is actually over here. Sometimes <laughs> Wikipedia shit doesn't actually cite stuff that's on Wikipedia. Illustrates traditional notions of geom... That, wait. As figure four illustrates, traditional notions of geometry dictate that shapes scale predictably according to intuitive and familiar ideas about the space that are contained within, such that, uh, for instance, measuring a line using first one measuring stick, then another one-third of its size, will give, for the second stick, a total length three times as many sticks long as the first. I feel like that could have been worded more nicely, but whatever. You've seen my videos, you know I'm a fucking klutz with language anyway. This holds in two dimensions as well. If one measures the area of a square, then measures again with the box of side length one-third, uh, you'll find that nine times as many squares uh, fit. Jesus. Such familiar scaling relationships can be defined mathematically by the general scaling rule in equation one, which is sort of here. I don't know why the one is over here. Whatever. That's like partially inept. Is this... How does this work? Okay, that is separate. Okay, I don't know. This is a picture. Whatever. Anyway, where the variable n stands for the number of measurement sticks or measurement units, sticks or squares, etc., whatever the fuck. Epsilon is the scaling factor, so that is our, that, that one-third number. And D is the fractal dimension, so that's the thing that we're actually interested in, right, is it's the number of dimensions that we're operating in. Okay, so this scaling rule typifies conventional rules of geometry and, and dimension. Referring to the examples above, it quantifies that D is one for lines because N is three when epsilon is one-third, Thus, they cancel each other out. Um, but we could actually get that cancellation with logarithms, which is really, really nice, because it's not simply dividing n by epsilon, or, you know, multiplying them together, or whatever the fuck, right? And the d is 2 for squares, because when n is 9, here you go. You can see why it can't be here, right? n is 9 when epsilon is 1 third, right? Because if you just multiply them together, now you're going to get 3, not 2. Right. So it's, it's the exponents that are that are relevant here. It's the exponents that we're looking for. And logarithms are the things that find the exponents. And exponents are the number of dimensions. So the fact that this is what we're doing makes fucking sense. The same rule applies to fractal geometry, but less intuitively. Mm, no. I think it isn't less intuitive. It's just... Applying the rule everywhere. <laughs> to elaborate a fractal line measured at first to be one length, then remeasure using a new stick scaled by one third, the old may be four times as many scaled sticks along, long rather than the expected three. In this case, n is four when epsilon is a third. And the value of d may be found by rearranging equation one, yada yada, right? So we have an exponent in here, so we're going to get logarithms out, or we can get logarithms out. Right, so if we want to isolate D, we're going to take log base E of both sides. That isolates negative D on this side. And then we get log base E of N over here. And then we can work this to be log N on log epsilon. Now, the, the base of your log doesn't matter. It can be natural logarithms. It can be base 10. It can be, by, like, whatever the fuck. It can be base 2. It doesn't matter anymore. Okay. So... Or the fractal described by n is 4 when epsilon is a third, such as the Koch snowflake, d is just over 1 and a quarter. A non-integer value that suggests the fractal has dimension not equal to the space it resides within. 
Of note, images shown in this page are not true fractals because the scaling described by D can not continue past the point of the smallest component. However, the theoretical patterns of these images represent uh, don't have discrete pixel-like pieces, but rather compose of an infinite number of infinitely scaled segments and do indeed have the claimed fractal dimension. All right, so something to note here. <laughs> Recall that it was claimed that you cannot do dimensional analysis with logarithms. The entire point of logarithms right here is to achieve dimensional analysis. That's what this is. That's what this is. We are finding the number of dimensions that is a fundamental component of dimensional analysis. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? This is what logarithms do. Logarithms give you dimensionality. They, they tell you what that is, what that looks like. And this, this little pattern right here, using logarithms, works even when it's non-integer. What the fuck? Why? God damn it. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand the claim. What the hell? Right? So here, let's go back here. Property transcendental meditation. Wow, you're I I can't spell for shit. Transcendental op function? Is that what it wants? There we go. Dimensional analysis. <laughs> you are notable because they make sense only when their argument is dimensionless. No. Are you shitting me? And then the example is logarithms. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Look. Look at this. This is telling you what your dimensions are. What the fuck? Is this why it's not intuitive? Because you're stupid? Is that what's happening? I think that's what's happening. 